The last post that we put up on the Facebook was me announcing the fact that I was going to be a juror on the fourth Russell Tribunal on Palestine, which I did. And I expressed the hope that I would shed some light on the Israeli occupation of Palestine and the predicament of the Palestinian people. The main conclusions were that there have been lots and lots of violations of international law by the Israeli government in complicity with the government of the United States. The occupation of the West Bank, the imprisonment of the population of Gaza, the building of settlements in the occupied territories, and the moving of the population out of those territories to make space for settlements. This is against the law. Victims of these violations have no recourse. Some of us consider the rule of law to be one of the most important facts in all of our lives, not just the victims, but those of us who are not yet victims. Having listened to the evidence, which I know some people will attack on the grounds that it was one-sided, and to some extent it was, because the invitations that the tribunal offered both to the United States government and to the Israeli government and to many bodies within those two organizations. None of them even replied to the invitation. And we produced a document. It's the executive summary of the findings of the fourth session of the Russell Tribunal. We took this document to the United Nations, the Committee on Human Rights of the General Assembly. The General Committee responded, which was quite exciting for me, never having been in the United Nations before. Why is it that the Israeli government is not held accountable for its breaches of international law? The UN is falling down on the promise of its charter. The charter of the United Nations was to represent the people, not the governments, not the states but the people. That lofty mandate has been subverted in narrow national interest. The United States of America uses its power of veto to protect its special relationship with Israel. And so Israel acts with impunity outside the auspices of international courts of law. In consequence, the Palestinians have no rights. What's to be done about this? There needs to be reform at the United Nations. You and I need to keep on making a noise about this. Maybe there's somebody out there who could help me. Many years ago, Gerald Scarf, the British political cartoonist, during the Biafran famine crisis, drew a beautiful cartoon. It was a picture of a very, very thin Biafran boy, and next to him, a picture of a huge pile of wheat or something and the boy has A written over his head and the pile of wheat has B and it says a Biafran famine problem baffles world leaders connect A to B. If there are any artists out there I would be fascinated to see if anybody can come up with something that we could use as an international symbol that we connect the rule of law to the victims of injustice. We should all have the same basic rights and the only way for us to all get them is if we can formulate a system of jurisprudence that is accepted by all of us so that the weakest among us has an avenue of recourse when they are being victimized by some of the strongest among us. This is the fundamental issue. There needs to be a way forward into finding a peaceful solution to the problems that face not just the Palestinians, but also the people of Israel. It was a long speech. <laughs>